ratio radicals. So what does that mean? Um, at its lowest level, it really means this kind of thing. When I have a fraction, let's say 1 over the square root of 2, um, the reasoning is in the old, at least as I understand it, is in the old days, old man in sandals, um, it's hard to conceive of what this value is. Uh, in fact, square root of 2 is approximately equal to 1.41, blah, 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 blah. And so what's 1 divided by 1.41, blah, 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 blah. That's not so easy to think about as compared to if I have um, 1 over the square root of 2 and I want to rid myself of the radical underneath, I would multiply that times the square root of 2. Why? Because radical 2 times radical 2, or square root of 2 times the square root of 2, is equal to the square root of 4, which we know a better way to write is 2. But I can't multiply this number by just this in the denominator. I can only, only multiply this value by the number 1 without changing its value. So let's look at that again. 1 over the square root of 2 times, this is what I want in the denominator, and the form of the number 1 that allows that to happen is that. So when I multiply these two fractions, I get this 1 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 2 in the numerator, and the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which we talked about is root 4, which is equal to 2. And so I get this value. And that's much easier to discern. 1.41 divided by 2 is about 0.7 and change. So that's easier to think about than to look at this and think about that. So that's my understanding of the reasoning. Now, if we give another example, just to reinforce that, let's look at um, 7 over the square root of 3. And if I want to rid myself of the radical in the denominator so I can see this easier. And some would teach it in high school, and I did as well, was we're not allowed to have the radical in the denominator, which is not exactly true, but if you can think about it that way, we don't want them there. So to get rid of it, I'd have to multiply the denominator by the square root of 3, or at least that's the least value that I can multiply it by to get rid of the radical. Now I can only multiply this number by the number 1, so this is going to be that. So 7 times this radical 3 is just 7 radical 3. I'm just multiplying two fractions, and this is going to be radical 9, which of course is 3. Try another one. Uh, 18 over radical 6, let's say. So this can't be simplified, but I can multiply that by that, and I'll get 6 in the denominator. And so I get 18 times the radical 6 over the square root of 36, which is 18 radical 6 divided by 6. But here we have to do some further simplification. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So that's the number 3, so I get 3 times the square root of 6. All right? So now it's a more complicated fare. Uh, we have situations where we have this type of uh, ordeal going on. 1 over 3 plus the square root of 2. Now, again, thinking about it as we don't want radicals in the denominator, etc. How do we take care of this? Now, some of you are going to think, I can multiply this times the square root of 2, right? Because that'll take care of this guy. But when I do that, I actually have to distribute to both of these terms. So I'll end up with 3 radical 2 plus 2, and I, I end up having a radical 2 again. So that's not going to work. What if I multiply it times the same thing, because that's what I did before, right? I took square root of 2 and multiplied it times square root of 2. If I multiply it times the same thing, watch what happens. I have to distribute. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 3 radical 2, plus 3 radical 2, plus radical 4. I'll just leave it like that. 9 plus, I got 3 of them, and another 3, so I have 6 of them plus 2, 9 plus 2 is 11, plus 6 radical 2. And I'm still stuck with this stupid radical 2 thing, right? So I will introduce you to this idea. You've seen it before, but you didn't think of it as this, or nor would you necessarily think of it in terms of this. If I multiply this times 3 minus radical 2, 
And of course, I can only multiply it by one, so it's gonna be the, the number one in the form of three, radical, three minus radical two over three minus radical two. I'm gonna get the following. One distributed to those, one distributed to these two terms is gonna equal three minus radical two. But watch what happens with these two guys. Three plus square root of two times three minus the square root of two. Three times three is nine minus three radical two plus three radical two minus square root of four. And so these two equal zero, right? They add up to be zero, or as some people prefer, cancel out. Those equal zero. So I get nine minus, that's a two. And so I get seven. And so I get seven in the denominator. And this achieved my goal, which was to rid, rid the denominator of all radicals. So the cool thing about that is you, like I've said, you've seen this before. Hopefully you guys recognize it. This is basically the difference of two squares. Though this is not a perfect square, it's, well, technically it isn't a perfect square because we're talking integers when we talk perfect squares, but it is the square of a number. It's the square of the square root of two. So this is a difference of squares. The difference of squares or difference of two squares has these opposing inner values that make it so that the middle terms, quote, cancel out. So you've seen that before in like x minus three, x plus three, the mechanics are the same. This thing right here, let's use a different color. This guy right here is called the conjugate of this guy. Conjugate of this guy. And this one is the conjugate of that one. They're, they're conjugates of each other. And I don't think we ever call it that, but this is really the conjugate of that and vice versa, okay? And it comes into complex numbers if you get that far uh, in your math studies. Um, the conjugate comes into play with uh, uh, imaginary numbers or complex numbers. Okay, so let's go to some other more complicated examples so that you're prepared to do these problems. How about, um, so I've used the square root of two twice now, so let's use the uh, different value so you can see it's kind of the same and put a, a value in the numerator. Let's put uh, 11 over three minus the square root of seven. So hopefully you're looking at, okay, I need to get rid of the radical in that denominator, so I'm gonna multiply it times its conjugate, three plus the square root of seven. And uh, that means the numerator's gotta be the same again because that number has to be the number one. And up top we get 11 times three plus the square root of seven. In the denominator we get three times three is nine. The middle terms go away, and so we get negative square root of seven times square root of seven, so I get minus the square root of seven times the square root of seven, which is minus the square root of 49, which is just seven. And so I get 33 distributing the numerator plus 11 radical seven over two. And that would be the rationalization of that uh, radical ratio. I don't know. That sounded weird. Okay, another example. Uh, let's go crazy. Let's put this nonsense up on the top so you can see how ugly it can possibly get. Square root of six plus the square root of five. And so, oops, I wanna multiply this times what? Again, I'm just dealing with conjugates. Don't let all the radicals freak you out or this wasn't a number anymore, it's a radical. I just need the square root of six to be multiplied times that square root of six to get rid of the radical and I need the same thing over here, but I need the signs to be opposing or opposite each other so that the middle terms, quote, cancel. I can't control what's in the numerator, so whatever's gonna happen with this thing is what's gonna happen. I can't do anything about it. So the conjugates here in the denominator will get rid of the radicals in the denominator. So this is gonna be the square root of six minus the square root of five because I can only multiply times the number one, and so I get the following. Square root of three minus the square root of seven that's a seven times the square root of six minus the square root of five. And in the bottom I get the square root of six times the square root of six, which is the square root of 36. The middle terms, quote, cancel, minus the square root of five times the square root of 25, which is the square, excuse me, square root of five times the square root of five, which is the square root of 25. Now let's do this ugly thing in the middle. I'm gonna not do it to the right, let's do it below. Square root of three times the square root of six, you could do this much quicker if you wanted to, minus the square root of three times the square root of five. 
minus the square root of 7 times the square root of 6 minus the square root of 7 times the square root of 5. Wow, that upper portion is just a nightmare. Now this is 6 minus 5, which is just 1. And so in the numerator I get, there's an extra 3 in here, so I actually get the square root of 18 minus the square root of 15 minus the square root of 42 minus the square root of 35 all over 1 which is just now this can be simplified 9 times 2 so it's going to be 3 radical 2 minus the square root of 15 minus the square root of 42 minus the square root of 35 all over 1 so I'm just going to I'm not going to write it that's your clean answer some might say that that's not any better than this thing, but I don't know. That's just what I'm taught and what you're responsible to be able to do. And um, there are some examples where the program asks you to conjugate the numerator. Now, specifically, I'm not aware of when, why you would do that. Somebody, uh, somebody more knowledgeable than I will have to tell you that. But it's the same, it's the same procedure. I'm going to choose a value in the numerator to multiply times the other numerator such that the radicals would go away. So that's going to be the square root of 5 minus the square root of 2. Again, the conjugate. I can only multiply it times the number 1 so without changing the value of the original number. So that means I have to have this in the denominator as well and then I just distribute. The numerator, of course, we get the square root of 25 minus the square root of 4 and then we have to distribute the 16 to both terms. So I get 16 times the square root of 5 minus 16 times the square root of 2. This is 5 minus 2, so I get 3 over, and I can't do anything more with these guys, square root of 2. And that's my best answer. So that's what I have for rationalizing uh, radicals. Hopefully it's helpful. Uh, take care. Bye. Bye.